All right, welcome back to the Knives Fast channel, guys. Say hello to Ren and Stimpy, Powder Toast Man, Log, and TV. And let's get started. And all you see is a logo in the middle here. So what is going on? So guys, this is going to be my response to a tag video that my buddy Lefty EDC, which do I have his sticker sitting over here? Well, I'll tell you what, this will have to suffice. All I have is a D10 Diva sticker. I do not have a lefty sticker sitting here. But anyway, uh, he did a video last week, and I cannot remember the exact title of it. But it was something about uh, a knife that's in high demand. So basically, he's got a really bougie collection, high-end collection. And he says people uh, often reach out to him to see if certain knives are available. And so he said, what was the one knife that people most reach out to you and, uh, you know, ask about it and inquire about it. Is it available? Is it for sale? And so I started thinking, uh, he, he had a really good one. And I started thinking, do I have anything like that in my collection? Well, the first one, and this is not my answer to the video, but the first one that came up was the Grant Gripper. When This is the most, like, heralded knife in my collection. Guys, I don't have... A lot of high-end knives. My knives are mostly under $200. I have a couple over a few. Uh, just recently added this beauty, which maybe will fall into this category at some point, which is the um, the Protec Mordax from Caviso with the MagnaCut steel, my first MagnaCut knife, and this beautiful milling. Uh, but the, no, nobody's really asked about, can I buy that? Um, Grant Gripper, there were people that actively asked me, uh, when I got this one and won it, could they buy it? And it was very much, where do I get one? How do I find one? Um, and there's a reason guys, this is an absolutely, uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal knife. Um, it, as you guys know, I, I had really no desire to even review one of these, Based on looking at it, it didn't look like anything that I normally would gravitate toward. I'm a lot like my friend Big Red EDC. I like knives with curves. Um, I'm not necessarily an angled crazy thing like this. But once I got this in, uh, this became literally the top of my collection. Uh, it's the top one or two that I own. It is phenomenal in the hand. I um, love a choil, but I love holding this back here. It is great for cutting into packages or cutting. It's great for breaking down cardboard, which I do a lot on Sundays on Trash Day. Um, it's fidgety. It's crazy. And it's very hard to get a hold of one of these right now, even though there's going to be more, uh, I hear. But um, phenomenal design. And the way it feels in my hand, the way the action is, everything, this has become quickly one of my favorite knives. But this is not the one we're going to talk about today. Well, I mean, we just talked about it, but it's not, neither of these are technically. And then I thought through my collection, well, let's just put these up here so while I talk, you got something to look at. Um, I thought through what, what else in my collection is something that people have offered to buy, have said it's hard to get a hold of, where do you get one of those? that kind of thing. And I thought through, and there really, really, really isn't anything else in my collection that's like that. Well, okay, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to pull one more. I have been asked multiple times because I do not believe these are any longer available about my Tidal Wave, uh, Jakarta, uh, uh, TRM Adam. Where do I get these scales? How do I get that? Can I, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but no, not really on that either. So, okay, let's fold these up and we'll see what in the world is the knife. Now, this, the problem with this is this knife is not going anywhere. This knife is staying in my collection, isn't going anywhere. And to be honest with you, I don't really carry it hardly at all. A, because it's sentimental, but man, I'll give you another reason in a minute. This is the Spyderco Mike Draper folder. Now, you know, you either like this design or you don't like it. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't. I think this is fantastic. Of course, I love blue. So you've got this beautiful titanium with the blue accents. You've got almost like skateboard tape back there. Look at that. That's cool. Uh, the textured blue, the spider web. Uh, you have Spyderco VG10 there. Uh, got the Spyderco logo and that 
full flat grind Mike Draper's signature, and these are made in Seki City, Japan. No jimping. Woohoo! You do have an opening hole now. It is a, um, a, a liner lock, if I can talk. I cannot, I can thumb flick it. I cannot middle finger flick this knife. Um, so let's just talk. Of course, there's a couple of things. Uh, by the way, let's let's do what this video is about first. When I first got this, I had where did you get that? Uh, what? Wh yeah, well, where do I get one? Can I buy yours? Is yours for sale? I've gotten that several times since when I put this. Man, it's dirty. When I put this in a uh, like a collection video, I immediately get people asking if they can buy it. Um, haven't had a lot of that, but I've had some because these are discontinued and not no longer available. Um, so this was given to me, I worked my previous job for 26 years and, uh, one of my buddies, uh, hired him. He worked under me for a lot of years, uh, kind of worked with the rest of the staff, uh, under me and they all pulled their money together and he bought this. He knew I love knives. He bought this, um, and they gave it to me on my last day, uh, kind of emotional at that point, but, uh, this will never go anywhere. I'm sorry, uh, I will die and this will still be in my collection and go to one of my kids or all of my kids or whatever. And I don't even know. But I, in other words, I have no plans to sell it. Now, there are issues, of course. Number one being there's no decent access to the lock bar, but you can, you know, you can work the, <laughs> as I'm talking about working the lock bar, now suddenly it won't move. That's great. Oh, there we go. Okay. Wow. Uh, it, it's not easy to get to. Uh, the second issue is the detent is very soft. And I did have this when I used to carry on the wrong side, on the left um, side, on the left side, I had it come open in my pocket and slice my pants and my leg. Um, so now appropriately, I carry it in the right side and it's not really going to do that because I'm going to grab it from this side. So that was my stupidity, not the knives. But this is an extremely sharp, slicey, thin, a thin flat grind blade. Uh, super, super cool and beautiful. And guys, it's just a one of a kind. I mean, it's in my collection. It's a one of a kind and, and they are no longer available. I got to tilt down just a little bit. I'm sorry. So uh, sorry for the crappy shake there. But um, that's it, guys. That is the Spyderco Mike Draper folder. So I would love to hear down in the comments uh, what your uh, knife like this is. Do you have one that that is is desired or sought after. I don't have hardly any others. These are the examples, and this is the one. Um, and uh, content creators out there, if you see this, please, I, I'm tagging you right now. So uh, let's see what yours are. So there you go, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, let me know if you did down in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. And thanks for watching the Knives Fast channel.